feed. Ladies and gents, welcome to TFI, where you join me and my mate Jeff. Just chilling outside with Mansion, next to the 911 and the AMG. Just having a bit of chit chat. Anyway, what we're doing, what we're doing in this video. Before I get cracking, I just want to put out a couple of disclaimers very quickly. First being, I am not an architect. I have no architectural experience. And I'm not going to pretend to know anything about architecture and make you think that I do. Because that's going to become pretty apparent throughout this video that I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to architecture. So, uh, let's just get that out of the way. And secondly, this is not paid promotion. I'm using the trial version of this program and the company behind it don't even know I'm doing the video. So everything in here and all opinions are entirely mine, absolutely. Right, what is this? It's Enscape. Enscape is a plugin for Autodesk Revit. And if you follow my channel, you might not be aware of what Revit is. I don't know who you are. You might not know what it is. Well, Revit is the architectural version of Inventor. It's the 3D modeler for the architectural world. And this is it here. So there's War Jeff there in his true form. <laughs> cardboard mannequin there's the 911 there's the amg and there's the mansion that you're looking at so with enscape you get a ribbon bar plugin and then you hit the go button and it ports your revit model out from revit into enscape and it makes it look like that within seconds and i'm not even joking it does it within seconds i'll show you that in a bit and you might be thinking at this point mate 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 surely surely though if, if revit is anything like inventor it's got its own renderer built into it so what's so special about this yeah, the picture looks beautiful, but why is this worthy of clickbait videos, thumbnails, and whoop whoop and hurrahs? Well, that's going to become, again, pretty apparent, but you can do this, amongst many things. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That is absolutely spectacular. It is stunning. So you can you can circle around, and you might be thinking, yeah, I've seen those fandangled cameras that you can have, you know, it takes spherical HDR imagery. What's so good about that? That's just one of those panoramic photographs, isn't it, surely? No, it's not. No, watch. I can actually move around. I can interact and walk around my Revit model in real time, fully rendered. Which opens up an absolute minefield of opportunities. Really does. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. So you can walk around, you can press spacebar, with, then you can fly around, you can jump up to the top floor, and then you can look down. There's War Jeff, there's the 911. I'm just floating on top of the Mercedes. Uh, which is not a good idea. I'm now walking on top of it. Uh, I hope the paint works all right. Anyway, right, so amongst those things, you can also change the time of day. For example, it's pretty dark right now. The lights are on. Hold down the right mouse button, and you can drag the sun and change the time of day. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that absolutely stunning? Absolutely mind-blowing. So there's Jeff there, he's still there, I'm not sure what he's doing, he's a very suspicious character, but we're going to leave him to it, we are not the police. The reason why that's useful is, uh, I mean, if you're an architect, you know why that's useful. It's very, very, very useful to see the, vi the, the building at certain points in the day, so you know where shadows are going to be lying, where the hot spots are, where there's going to be dark spots, light spots in the rooms within the building at different times of day. That is very, very, very useful, and this updates on the fly real time, I mean, the shadows are all updating as the sun moves throughout the time of day, there's the time of day at the bottom right, and you can just change it and then see what things are going to look like at that time of day. I mean, it's just amazing. It really is absolutely amazing. So it's pretty easy to get going with this. I mean, I downloaded a trial version of it and I was up and going with it in seconds. It's that easy. It's a pretty small download. You can run a trial for 14 days. You, you load up Revit, if assuming you've got Revit. Activate one of the 3D views. You can use your own custom views, but you activate one of the 3D views. Pick which one you want to jump to and then just hit go. And that's it. Yeah, I am really am using the trial version here. <laughs> I've got three days left on it, and then I can't use it again. Uh, so I need to get this video out quickly. So you load up Enscape. You get a couple of tips as it's loading up, but within seconds, it just drops you straight into your scene. It ports the the model straight out from Revit into Enscape. It's even got, as far as I know, I think it does. I haven't tried it yet, but it's got its own standalone build, so it can port the model from. Revit into Enscape, and then you can use it on a laptop or a PC that doesn't have Revit, which is again, it's amazing. It means you don't have to carry your desktop with you. You can put it on a little netbook or a notebook, and uh, there you go. So there's the model. It's now in Enscape, not Revit, and um, we're just now walking around. And look at that. There's all Jeff's mates. This is a very shady-looking character. <laughs> what he's doing there with his questionable fashion sense. What else can we do here? What else can we do is there's a whole world of opportunities here. It's so it is so good. I'll start with one of the best things that this does. This is a live feed from Revit, right? So if you're doing there's all kinds of uses and applications for Enscape. That's, I know, sounds like a sale pitch. I'm, this, really, this really is not paid promotion. This is mostly useful for design reviews, so internal team design reviews 
external client reviews, presentations, sales pitches, anything where you need to show somebody a unfinished design or a partially finished design or even a completed design. You want to show them it outside of an environment that looks like this because as functional as Revit is, I mean, you can make Revit models look a lot better than this, don't get me wrong. You'd, you'd rather not show them this in the native CAD application when you've got something like this at your disposal. I mean, this is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. This is the money shot. If I was an architect, I'd be all over this in a heartbeat. I'd be going balls to the wall with this, using it every day. So as well as, as, well as it being just absolutely beautiful, it's also a live feed from Revit. So if you are in the middle of a design review or a client meeting a presentation sales pitch and someone says, I want to see that table and chair somewhere else i want to you know, i want you to extend a wall drop an extra window in change the color of the glass anything they want you don't have to change the cad model and then re-render it it will update enscape immediately and it, that is just just phenomenal so i can take this chair here for example just say right well okay well you want to see what the chair looks like so sort of over here let's get that chair out of the way and you just jump back straight into enscape and then, <laughs> it updates it straight away how good's that how amazing is that round of applause to the people behind this now you might be, I don't know if you're from the architectural world you might be aware of other programs that do this and this might not be anything new I don't know this is the first time I've personally seen something like this and it's just blowing my mind that this is actually possible we're at a point where we can do this it's just crazy okay so the live feed that opens up a whole world of opportunities. I don't think I need to really talk about that any more than I already have. So Enscape comes with its own bunch of settings as well. So these are the Enscape settings where you can change various things. I'm not going to go over every setting, but I'll just go over the main useful ones. So paper model mode changes the appearance of the textures, takes away all the textures and gives you sort of this line art where you can change the line thickness. And that would be good for sort of catalogs, product product imagery, taking prints where you don't want to have a you know a full. If you send in this, oh, to turn this off. If you send in that to a color printer, and you don't have the best printer in the world, that might come out pretty naff. Whereas if you turn on paper model mode, that you're going to get a much better print from a, a lesser quality printer if you use that. I'm just guessing again. I'm not an architect, so I don't know why paper model mode is actually important. But I'm assuming it does have a use. We've got polystyro mode. Polystyro mode again. I'm not entirely sure what that means. There is a tooltip for every single set in here. Makes the rendering look like poly polystyrol. Well, mate, I don't know what polystyrol is, so it's not really much use to me. The sunlight scatters through thin geometry. I don't know what that means, but again, I'm assuming this is useful in the architectural world. This one here, light view. Now, this is creamy. This is beautiful. Light view allows you to see where or which regions of your building and your site are in direct sunlight based on color scale red direct sunlight blue not in direct sunlight everything else somewhere in between so as the sun moves throughout the day you can see now the sun is directly above so the ground is under direct sunlight hence it's gone orangey ready and then everything that's blue is not under direct sunlight because it's under the shade it's like that from productivity standpoint is amazing that is so good it is it's one tick it is one tick of a checkbox to get that it's just amazing depth of field this is the money shot this is creamy so if you want your if you want your client to be signing some big fat checks of justice you want to be turning on depth of field to get the money shot for them because people love bogey people love a nice blurry background so that's what depth of field is all about so you turn on depth of field you increase it up a little bit and then we can let's just uh, let's just zoom into this table let's get something a little bit cinematic going on have autofocus turned on it's going to autofocus on what it thinks you're looking at and then everything else in the background turns blurry with no depth of field the entire scene's in focus with maximum depth of field everything in the background is blurred out and it'll just try and stay focused on what it thinks you want to look at and then you can obviously increase or decrease the depth of focus as desired and that's where you get your money shots your catalog pictures all the you know the creamy imagery that you want to sell something based on because people do love a bit of bokeh all right that's depth of field we've got auto exposure which is just scene brightness field of view which is how much uh, you know what your peripheral vision is and then skybox you can put your own background in which is really useful if you have the equipment to do so you can go to site you can go to the actual site if you want to be an absolute chief you can go to the site with a spherical camera one of these 360 cameras take an hdr spherical background and drop your building into the actual site if you want to be a right baller, you can do that. And then rendering quality. Well, this is just, you know, if you're running on a potato of a PC. If you're running on a potato of a PC, mate, and you're an architect trying to sell stuff, just stop watching this video. <laughs> Go to a shop and buy yourself a better PC. Because if it's all about trying to sell something on how something looks, 
to get the best PC is money well spent. So you can, I'll put that up to Ultra. The PC that I'm running on now, if you want some sort of benchmark for comparison, this is a GTX 1070 with an i7 4790K, 32 gig of RAM. And I'm running, I don't know what the frame rate is. I could probably get a frame rate plugin for this. I think I'm somewhere in between 50 and 60 frames per second on Ultra. It's looking pretty good. I've got the the, re, the Enscape window sized at 1080p, whereas if I was to put this at 4K or at 1440p, I might uh, drop a few frame rates, but it's uh, it's looked pretty good for now. Right, image. This is where you can change the image quality and the, well, not the image quality, but the post-processing, the color sharpness, the color quality, the, the amount of effects that are going on in the picture. And you will change these based on what it is you're showing and who you're showing it to. For example, if you are trying to get that money shot for those big fat checks of justice, then you want to make it look as cinematic as possible. So you'd start playing with things like bloom, uh, let's put the sun in the sky so that we'll get a bit of light shining through the glass. Look at that. Right, so that's looking pretty good. Bloom and fog density changes all this hazy effect that goes on as the light comes through the window. So you can increase bloom to get that extra hazy effect. And then you can increase fog density or decrease fog density based on what you think looks best and what you think your client is going to cream over. And then we've got sun shadow contrast. That just increases the blacks. We've got, uh, well, I'm assuming it does, sun, sun shadow. This value regulates the brightness of the sun and affects the contrast of the sun shadows. Yeah, so it's increasing the blacks where there's uh, where the shadows. We've got color temperature, so you can increase or decrease the color temperature to try and dictate and control how somebody feels when they look at your imagery. The warmer the color temperature, the more at home people tend to feel, whereas cold colors make people feel sort of a bit disconnected from imagery. But it, 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 again, it depends what it is you're showing. There's no right or wrong here. So it's color temperature, you've got saturation. Uh, again, it just, it's just all based on what it is you're showing and who you're showing something new. Sharpness and then contrast. Sharpness is a nice setting, but too much sharpness on the picture might make it look a little bit too artificial. I'll just drop the sharpness all the way down to the bottom. Look at that, man. That is absolutely spectacularly beautiful. The rest of the settings just control, you know, movement. You can change the way the camera pans and orbits and moves forward and back. We've got Oculus Rift support, which I'm not really going over too much in this video because I don't have a Rift. I'm a bit curious as to why they decided to support the lesser of the two VR solutions. But when they get Vive support, I'm going to be all over that, man. This is going to be amazing in, in VR. So I'm waiting for Vive support coming out. What else we got? Oh, you can change the height of the guy that's walking around as well. I mean, <laughs> like, what the hell? Come on. So I'm walking around based... What I, My viewpoint is based on somebody being 1.7 meters high. But if you're a little bit shorter, then you can drop that down. And then you can see the world from somebody who's a little bit shorter. <laughs> so what the... But well, another thing I haven't showed you as well, you can actually go inside the buildings. <laughs> it's like... What the hell? If you're walking around and you come across a door or a glass pane, it's going to stop you from walking through. Yeah, I can press spacebar and it's just going to let me jump through. So we can walk around the building. I mean, this is just fun. Imagine the design reviews. Imagine the client presentations you can now do. Just walking around using WASD. And the, the amazing thing is, tell me what, I'm going to turn depth of field off because it is struggling to, it's struggling to cope with that. But when you come to stairs, when you come to stairs, it even pretends like you're walking up the stairs. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> oh, that is so good. This is so good. We've got a pool. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> what is this? Am I am I in am I in Shrek's house? What is this Dell laptop? What what is this? Is this like some kind of giant's laptop? So if if you're coming across stuff which you think mm, that doesn't look great, well all you all you do is you just go over to Revit and you can just delete it out. So I'm gonna have to go here and find out where this damn thing is and excuse my Excuse my very poor skills. I am not a Revit expert. Uh, I'm assuming it's that thing there on the table. So all I can do is just take that, delete it out, and I think that should do it. Hey, look at that. It's gone. There we go. So we can just have a quick look at the furniture. You can hover over the balcony. What does it look like? You can change the time of day, remember? So based on it being now 4 o'clock in the afternoon, this is where the sun's going to be landing in the room. Is there too much sun on this on the on this furniture? Is there not enough sun getting into the room throughout the course of the day? So we can put the time back to eight in the morning. So the sun isn't getting into this room properly until sort of three o'clock in the afternoon. Do you want that? Do you not want that? Well you can you can now find out before you even lay any bricks. It's who's this? Who is this? And why do you have a suitcase? Where are you going? Are you leaving me? Don't leave me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I take it back. I will be a better man. What? Stop turning your back to me, woman. Are you an air hostess? She looks like a Margaret. So yeah, you can just walk around, press spacebar to jump through rooms, and then um, 
I, I forgot where I was going with this. Oh yeah, because we were looking at the uh, the height of the guy. We were looking at the height of the guy, or the girl. You could be a girl walking around this, and you can change that in the advanced setting using spectator height. There we go. So we're now 1.7 meters. It's it's so good. It's so good. It's got its own capture ba software built in, but I'm not using it. But it does have its own capture software, and I haven't tried to use it either. But uh, you can control bitrate duration and the uh, interpolation, which uh, I haven't done anything with, so I can't comment on it. And then customization. I haven't done anything with this either, but by the looks of it, when you launch Enscape, you can have your own loading screen or your client's loading screen to give that personal touch. So if you're present, presenting to a client, you can have their logo, their company details appear on the launch screen. So it makes it them feel like you've really tailored this for them. And that, that wins brownie points with clients, that kind of thing, um, rather than just showing them a canned demo. This is Enscape. <laughs> it's phenomenal, man. It's absolutely crazy really is amazing sometimes i wish that i was in a different industry to be able to play with tools like this more often and do something productive with stuff like this because uh, you, you sometimes think you're, you're missing out when all this stuff's going on in other industries needs and musts supply and demand as they say all right that'll do i think that's enscape if you want to check it out i'll put a link to their website in the description of the video uh and uh, at the moment it's only available for autodesk revit but who knows, it might be coming to your product of choice at some point in the near future. So, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Neil, and you've been watching me mess around with Enscape for Autodesk Revit. I'll see you in the next one. Doodles!